In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a very important video on my channel talking about a new product I just launched, why it matters, and I'm also going to give you some really, really fire tips from what we learned from Drini in the Madden Classic. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you're new to the channel, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. Our goal here on the channel is just to help you become the best Madden player that you could possibly become. And every single day we upload videos that can help you on the offensive side of the ball, videos that can help you on the defensive side of the ball, as well as gameplay tutorials that can actually break down what I'm doing and why I'm doing it in a live Madden Ultimate Team matchup. So if you want to get access to all of those videos for free, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to be able to know whenever we release a new video. Now, for those of you that don't know, I actually just launched this new product that I'm calling true fans and what it basically is for is it's for my true fans the people that really really like my content the people that really want to go to, to a, a deeper level um a deeper level level of understanding about madden a deeper level of understanding about what pro players are actually doing and why they're actually doing it I'm going to be at basically providing you guys with really, really deep material um, as it pertains. And so YouTube is not the best platform, in my opinion, for me to do that in a five to ten minute video. So these videos are going to mostly be a little bit longer. And so what I'm going to be using to do this is a Patreon. So I have a link down in the description where you can sign up for it. It's five bucks a month. And this is an absolute steal. If you're a Madden junkie like I am and you want to dive super, super deep, what we're going to do is every single week, okay, every single week you're going to get access to three, at least three exclusive videos. The first one is an offensive meta update. It's where we basically look at what the competitive community is doing and we break down why the meta is shifting, right? So maybe it's talking about the playmaker meta or the smart right of corner routes or something like that, but it's gonna be taking a deep dive into that. The same thing we'll do that for the defensive side of the ball. So what's the latest meta update for the defensive side of the ball? What are the new little nuances? For example, should you use a seam flat or a quarter flat if you're playing match coverage? Uh, well, in the meta update, we'll explain why you should do this or do that depending on the situation. And so we're going to take a really deep dive into the defensive side of the ball. And then the third video that you're going to get every single week with this is you're actually going to get a pro player film study analysis. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at Drini Joka, who's kind of becoming uh, to be considered, some people consider him the best Madden player of all time. Uh, obviously, uh, Michael Skimbo was first that, Problem Right was first that. Um, and so, you know, kind of as this, uh, as the as the generations of Madden are starting to shift a little bit, Drini is kind of a front runner for the best player right now in Madden 21. There's some other guys up and coming like Spam and Buttons or Wesley or Henry. There's a lot of young guys coming up. And so we're going to be taking a look at Drini this week. But real quick, so that's kind of what you're going to get. So every single week, it's $5 a month. So in one month, you're going to get four offensive meta tips, four defensive meta tips, and four pro player film studies. And these are going to be really, really deep dives. So the videos are going to be really intense, really long, probably not not long, but uh, just really deep. Um, and so we're going to really try to give you access to the best most in-depth analysis of Madden that I can possibly do for you. So uh, we're going to pull out all the stops for this. And again, this is just for my true fans. So if you don't, if you if you're good with just the free stuff, that's fine. I understand that. This is just a way to support me as a creator, and it's a way for you to for me to be able to have a platform to be able to go a little bit deeper than even I do in my guides even than I do on my videos, even than I do in the text message membership. So this is like a super, super high level stuff. And there, it's gonna be more conceptual in nature. So it's not gonna be like a trips, we, we might do some, some mini schemes and things like that in it, but it's primarily gonna be focusing on like how you can actually take a concept and apply it to multiple formations. So you can apply the same concept of trips tight end to bunch tight end, right? Or you can apply the same concept from three through five wide to, to nickel normal or whatever it might be. There's gonna be some formation specific things, but ideally these are like super high level conceptual teaching that you can apply to anything that you're doing in Madden 21. So I would highly encourage you, if you consider yourself a good Madden player, this is gonna make you a great Madden player. If you consider yourself a great Madden player, this is gonna put you into the top 
one or two percent in the community. If you consider yourself an average player and you want to actually get better, this is probably um, the best way to do that because it's deep dives every single week into some very high level concepts and explaining the why behind the what is really what we're trying to accomplish here. So if you want to sign up for this, again, uh, the, uh, some people have asked me, I got a, I got this question, I do want to touch on this and then we'll get into the video about Drini uh, in just a moment. But I had a couple people say, well, why would you start something like this in June? Why wouldn't you just wait till the new Madden comes out? The reason why is because the whole purpose of the whole purpose of this platform is for the people that actually want to become the best Madden player they can be. Um, and so to become the best Madden player you can be, the summer months, June, July, and the early part of August is like the most important time for your development as a Madden player. In fact, I myself have been playing more Madden in the last month than I've than I've played probably all season because I'm pushing, I'm learning, I'm studying, I'm I'm getting better in a lot of key areas that will actually transfer over to Madden 22. And so the summer months are really where I think the the training camp or the training grounds actually exist for the new Madden. Even though there's some things that will change, there's nuances and little things will change. Overall, your ability to user is going to be really important to develop during this time. Your ability to actually understand why the pro players do what they do is going to be able to is going to, is going to be really really important. In fact, I find that if you want to hit Madden 22 in full stride, it is essential that you maximize your summer in terms of playing money games, playing weekend league, playing players lounge games, playing as many tournaments as you can so that you're developing as an actual player. You're, because the thing that you can develop is situational awareness. You can develop repetition, execution. You can develop um, mental grit. You can develop an understanding of like the concept, concepts that will apply from year to year. And so that's why you know we want to take a really deep dive with this. So this is only for people who want to be the best. And if you want to be the best, head down to the description and sign up. It's just five bucks a month really really cheap cheaper than any website membership that i've seen so far and i'm telling you right now it's going to be a hundred percent worth it and i'm going to prove it to you because we're going to take a look at dreamy's game against spoto in the madden uh classic so what we're going to do is do a little bit of a preview of this and we're actually going to take a look at his film we're not going to watch all the film we're going to watch just simply one drive and then i'm going to do some practice mode analysis on what we see so i'm going to switch the inputs here so that we can get over here to the uh, display capture and we're going to show you this on my computer screen so uh what you're going to see is we're just going to watch and right here dreamy is on offense so you see here he's going to open up with a little inside zone. Now this is Regs. Regs plays a little bit differently than Mutt does. And so it's a little bit different in terms of like what are the types of defenses. The biggest thing in, the, in Regs that shifts is the meta as far as a defense. Are they going to run more zone drops? Are they going to run, you know, what are they going to run specifically? So you're going to see that Spoto, you know, we can see all these adjustments here. But you're going to notice different types of route combos from, from Drini. So like right here, very simple little, um, little underneath drag, almost like a Z-spot style setup. Drini is running, I believe, the Seattle playbook, uh, the Seattle bunch in this. So the big key to watch here is what are these three players doing in combination with what is this guy doing. So you'll see man coverage, a little soft squad, probably some zone drops. But you see here this bunch trail right here. That's his key play that actually kind of um, – that's what we would call a constraint theory play. It's, it's, it's the play that he likes to go to when he notices that his opponent is overextending to stop some of the basic flood concepts on the backside. Now, you also have to look at kind of right here. It looks like Spoto's going to go to match. Now, every time that Drini goes to this, I want you to watch this running back right here. You're going to see this route. This is where that route was actually, I think, made very popular out of P. But over, as you can see over the top, to Devontae Adams for an absolute laser because the user has to kind of contain this. Now this little running back in route doesn't just have to be done out of bunch tight end. It can actually be done out of several other concepts uh, and we'll show you that a little bit in a little bit. You see here a little inside zone read, nice run by Drini, kind of putting him in, into a good position. Now one of the things that he's doing really well is you're noticing that he's keeping a very balanced look. Whenever he comes out in short side bunch, oftentimes he will switch over to this wide side bunch right here, or the bunch tight end, I apologize. And he'll run some of his different concepts. He likes inside switch, he likes to be a bit over. And as you see here, he's getting into 
uh, into scoring position. And so what we see from Spoto is a lot of cover two, a lot of cover two with different types of adjustments behind it, whether it be main coverage, whether it be um, you know just running a standard cover two. But really, essentially what he's doing, Spoto is leveraging these cover two cloud flats because the cloud flats from cover two, especially if you drop those in zone drops, are going to do a really good, really good job against crossing routes and corner routes from compression sets like Bunch. Cover two is actually the primary way that I would recommend defending Bunch. Now you see here he's going into the single back wide trips, probably going to run a little 0 one trap right there, and he's into the end zone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shift over to uh, practice mode. We're going to talk a little bit about what you just saw. So first things first is Drini, I believe he's in the Seattle playbook. Let me just double check. No, actually I think he is in New York. So I'm going to flip sides here. Um, he actually ran New York for the for the clubs, which or for the um, classic, which is interesting because of the fact that he's been in Seattle for most of this season. So you know we'll, we'll just break down kind of what we saw there. So, anyways, first things first is this. I thought this was actually really really impressive from him. What you saw from Spoto is you saw this um, three through five wide meta defense. Right, we've all seen it. Um, it is simply put the best defense in the entire game. Uh, I have a full guide on it in the description, but it is the best defense of the entire game. But what he was doing that I thought was interesting was you saw that Spoto was running a lot of actually uh, Tampa 2, Tampa 2 looks, and I'm pretty sure that his zone drops were something like to this effect right here, something like that right there, and that's kind of how he was setting his defense up. So we'll just come out in a basic 3-3-5, cover 4. And then Drini on the, on the offensive side of the ball, was doing a couple of specific things. So the first thing that he was doing um, that I thought was strategic was he had the you know the bunch tight end. He pretty much just ran it as this. I would have done a couple little things differently, but all in all, um, if you're going to audible a bunch tight end, it actually made a little bit more sense to do it the way that Journey was doing it than the way that I would recommend doing it because I I wouldn't audible to bunch tight end. I'd come out and so anyways. But let's take a look at his bunch. So first things first, um, one of his favorite plays was this halfback base. Um, this halfback base or even the uh, little inside zone from bunch tight end, those were two of his favorite plays. He also had this play here, um, bunch trail. Uh, in, that, in that drive, he ran bunch trail. Uh, he has mesh post, obviously, at his arsenal. He has base. The other play that he ran was Z-spot. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come out in this play, uh, Jets dig, but we're going to focus in on a couple of the specific plays that he ran on that drive. So the first one that he ran from Bunch was was this um, was was this uh, Z spot setup. And basically, what it was was it was a simple flood concept, just like this, and he would block the running backs. This is kind of what the concept was. Now, what Spoto was doing was actually kind of interesting. So he was basically doing this right here, but he was playing main coverage from it. So it would be like um, an example would be, you know, essentially, and, and it might be easier to do this out of cover two man, but it's it, in essence, this is kind of what you got. Uh, you got a lot of like this right here, and then maybe basically just usering the running back, or maybe just doing something as simple as this. Like this was this was one of the main defenses that you saw um, Spoto running. Maybe something like this. Um, you know, just different types of zones underneath it. It's kind of one of the ways a lot of people have shifted to defending gun bunch. So on this specific play, it actually does a really good job. You're going to see here that this corner route that normally gets over these zones because he's got that cloud flat, um, it's going to take that away. And so Drini ended up on that play, had to, had to check it down. Um, but that was one of the plays that he ran. Another play that he but, – but here's the thing that I thought was really, really fascinating. What Drini would do that I thought was super strategic – is if he was coming out in the short side, so let's say the ball was on the right side of the field, instead of um, instead of like doing anything else, like instead of coming out with his bunch flipped or something, he would almost always audible to this right here. And this was the setup you saw with the delay fade and the running back cross. Now this right here is a really, really good setup because look where the players are. And you can't, it's not an easy switch. Um, you can man align it, but it kind of jacks your zones up, especially if you're in this kind of Tampa 2 style. And you're just your adjustments are all over the place. And so basically, Drini would quick snap, 
But what he would look for here would be, obviously he's got his boot over set up, he's got his crosser, he's got his, his post route, he's got everything that he needs over on that side. But this was the specific thing that Drini was trying to do. So um, Spoda was running a lot of this coverage right here. So when Drini would go to this and set this up really quickly, what it would mean is this would be kind of what you would see. You would see something to the effect of this right here, um, where you had, let me just do that. There we go. So you would have essentially this, right? And then your user in the middle, you'd have something like this right here, and then you have kind of a cross man. So this was basically the concept that he was looking for. So what the, the, the problem that this creates is Spoto's user was likely to sit over the middle to try to take away the crosser uh, mid-read or something like that over the middle, maybe even the delay fade, right? This little in route that he would sneak out of the backfield, there's no flat defender on this backside. It's just main coverage. And so Dreen was able to consistently work the ball up and down the field by using that adjustment. Another one that he really liked to do, it'd be to basically audible to this and then essentially just run inside zone. And so the way that this would look is he would actually use motion on the circle receiver. So he could go this direction. And then he could also, what's really nice about this motion is you, if you like to look that way, then you could do a little stop and go in the backfield and cut it back. Drini's run game was actually one of the things that I thought was really, really strategic um, just about his classic. Another thing is this, if you run this base from bunch, if you run it to the short side of the field, so let's say Spoto was setting up that, that, um, that Tampa 2 style defense where he's kind of manning up out of it. So it would be something like this right here. Um, when he goes to something like this, then the beauty of this base is because it's to the short side, you're gonna get really, really good blocking as you can see, and you're gonna be able to just kind of get upfield. One of the other secrets to running a good base, in my opinion, um, is when you run base, really what you wanna to try to do, because you wanna get your guard to be in a good position to pull uh, so that he can kick out the user defender. So the best way to do that is, let's say for example, if they shift their D-line to the right, okay? And they're may, maybe they're gonna try to shoot this gap right here. What you wanna do is you wanna double team whoever the guy that can get to the guard is. So on this side, I'm gonna double team that left side guy. You see that that guard pulls over and we have a pretty decent uh, opportunity there. Got a, a little bit of a nice little rush, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. So same thing here. Now I gotta look who's the guy that's the problem for the guard. It's this guy, so I'm gonna double team him and ID the user. And you'll see right here this little natural um, this little natural run. The beauty of this is really hard to shoot. So it's good for a yard or two minimum, um, and, and that's, that's what's really nice about it. So now back to this for just a moment. And obviously he hit the crossing route and all of that, but I want to talk one more, one more specific thing that I thought was interesting. So um, due to the way Spoto was running his defense, because he was running a lot of Tampa 2, um, this was where we wanted to uh, kind of show this off a little bit. So if I just shift over here, what you're going to notice is if he's running a lot of Tampa 2 underneath, it's likely that he's going to want a user looking for you know anything underneath, whether it be a running route, a route to the running back or something, right? So you were seeing a lot of this, um, you know, maybe even something like that right there. Uh, this was kind of the gist of what you were seeing from Spoto. So if you watch this back, if you run the tape back you're going to this bunch trail right here. And this bunch trail, um, if you smart route this corner route to the, to the R1 receiver, you're gonna see that he's gonna do this. So you can create essentially a concept basically like this right here. And then you could do some, you know, underneath if you wanna block the running back, you certainly can. Um, you can even go with a max protect cert. I think Dream actually did go with a max protect setup where you do something as simple as this right here with a little hitch underneath that you can playmaker one way or the other. But the reason this is really good is if you run cover two, and Spoto user this in the game, but if you run cover two, you're going to see that. So the, the user has to be pulled out of the out of the underneath middle of the field, which is then going to open up stuff like the PA boot over and things like that. So this is just a little hit of what we're going to be talking about in our Patreon. If you want to sign up for that, that's going to be in the description. Again, it's 100% for my true fans. It's for the people that want to be the best Madden player they can possibly become. And so if you are sitting there and you want to get good and you want to capitalize on your summer Madden, your Madden summer, where you're able to go in and you're able to do deep, deep dives on some stuff, we're going to have some great material for you in that Patreon. 
Patreon. Again, three videos every single week. The first one is going to be an offensive meta update. We talk about the latest things that people are doing in the competitive scene and how to counter it on the offensive side of the ball. We're going to do a defensive meta update every single week where we do the same thing just on the defensive side. We talk about what the best of the best are doing, why they're doing it, how you can counter it. And then the third thing that we're going to do every single week is we are going to on purpose break down the tape of a professional Madden player or a competitive Madden player, someone that is really, really um, competing at a very, very high level. We're going to talk about why they're doing what they're doing. We're going to show you exactly how to do what they do. And we're going to give you all of that four times a month. So four, uh, four times a month, you're going to get a pro player gameplay or breakdown. You're going to get an offensive meta update and you're going to get a defensive meta update. So every single week, and it's just five bucks a month. You can cancel anytime you want, but five bucks a month gets you access to this material. And we actually are going to be capping this. We're not going to let, uh, we're actually going to be limiting the amount of people that can sign up because we want to keep the number um, basically as, as small as we possibly can um, to justify it so that we can really, really go deep. It gives us the opportunity to kind of have a closed group uh, where we can really, really dive into what is going on right now in competitive Madden and what you can really take away from it to apply to your own game to make you the best possible player you can be. And so if you are a true fan, if you're truly wanting to get better at this game, I want to encourage you to sign up for that. It's just $5 a month. And I guarantee you, you will learn something in every single video that we do. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. And we're actually going to have a deeper version of this game tape broken down on that True Fan page. So head down to the link if you want to get the rest of the gameplay broken down. That was just one little snippet of what we're going to be doing. So thanks for your time. And again, if you want to get a membership, you can get that in the description for just five bucks a month.